It is a big pleasure for me to introduce Mehmet Inan uh, from Izmir uh, Biomedicine and Genome Center. Uh, thanks to all contribution uh, for Mehmet Inan and Batuhan uh, in terms of the technical support and uh, for participants during this weather to uh, by uh, participants uh, to contribute. Thank you very much. And now I leave the thanks to Mehmet Inan. OK, uh, hello, everyone. Again, uh, greetings from Izmir. Uh, first, uh, uh, Barish uh, Hoca asked me to introduce myself a little bit uh, on, on details. I am a graduate from uh, Atatürk University, Agricultural Engineering uh, uh, Faculty, Department of uh, uh, uh, Food Engineering. Uh, and then after graduating uh, from bachelor, after getting a bachelor degree, I went to US to study uh, food science in uh, for uh, Masters and PhD, and I I got my Masters and PhD in University of Nebraska Lincoln uh, between from ninety four to two thousand. After receiving my uh, PhD in food science, specializing on uh, molecular biology and and fermentation of Picea pastoris yeast, uh, I had a postdoc in chemical engineering. And then I'll also I served as a research assistant professor for five years at the University of Nebraska, uh, Lincoln. And then I moved to industry, uh, Alder Biopharmaceuticals, that specialized in uh, producing monoclonal antibodies in yeast Picea pastoris. And I came back to Turkey, returned back to Turkey in 2010, and at Akdeniz University, where I was uh, promoted to professorship in 19, uh, 2013. And then since then, uh, I, two years ago, or actually one and a half years ago, 2019, I moved to the uh, Izmir Bio, uh, Biomedicine and Genome Center on, on, on duty. And I'm still a faculty of Akdeniz University the uh, engineering faculty. So right now I am heading the uh, IBG Pharma uh, operations at the IBG. And in terms of microbial system, recombinant protein production in microbial system and CHO, uh, Chinese hamster ovary cells. So today I would like to talk to you about uh, <clears throat> Uh, SARS-CoV and COVID disease, COVID-19 disease, and I will give you some information about the vaccine development studies in the world. And here else at IBG, what do we do for the vaccine development? The active cases that we I mentioned in the world is over 10 million, and in Turkey is about 200,000, and in Turkey about 5,000 people died so far and in the world is over 500,000 people died. And as recently, and we may not say that the second wave, but the some, some countries, especially uh, South America countries, the numbers are increasing, unfortunately, unfortunately. So the hope for this to disease to go away, either natural uh, mutations, that it will not be able to infect the people, virus, of course, itself, or uh, developing a drug or a vaccine for the treatment of the, uh, this disease. So the SARS-CoV is a, is a coronavirus uh, uh, caused by coronaviruses, virus SARS-CoV-2. The SARS-CoV is the original that occurred in 2003, and, uh, <clears throat> and also uh, the the SARS name comes from severe acute respiratory syndrome that affects the mostly lung and you know, respiratory uh, uh, <coughs> the, the functions. So the, the, the virus uses ACE2, uh, the protein, and then express the lung, especially the endothelial cells of the human body, angiotensin converting enzyme. This spike protein attaches to it 
and then enters the cell. So once the, it enters the cell via the, the H2 spike uh, interactions, and it releases the, the messenger RNA of the virus, and then the, all the proteins are uh, synthesized using the human cell machine is translation machinery, and then is again assembled into the, in the virus and released in, in, into uh, other cells. So that's how it's spread in the human body. Uh, when we compare the, the, the COVID-19 and SARS and MERS, that, and we learned a lot from these diseases that occurred in 2003 and 2014 for the MERS. And this is very, you know, uh, the spike proteins, SARS-CoV-19 versus SARS original, is spike proteins are shares 60 percent homology. So even there is a, a theory that SARS-CoV protein, spike protein may even protect the people from COVID-19 disease if used as a vaccine candidate. So the SARS-CoV uh, spike protein uh, binding mechanism in here, as you can see, spike protein, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the spike protein on the surface of uh, virus attaches the host receptor ACE2 by trimer spike protein. So in order to develop a, a, a drug or a antibody as, uh, as a result of vaccine, we have to stop these interactions. So the ACE2 versus ACE2 and uh, ACE2 and uh, spike protein uh, interaction, we have to try to block that uh, interaction. So if you follow the, uh, the COVID vaccine or, or therapeutic tracer, so this is already registered over uh, 150 vaccine candidates and 280, 284 therapeutic drugs has been, uh, I'm sorry, uh, over, over, uh, over 284 uh, therapeutic drugs has been developed. Those are uh, 198 are in human clinical trials. So you can actually follow from the BioRender webpage these all and weekly every Monday has been up updated. Actually from yesterday even one the vaccine candidates entered and one uh, into human clinical trials and then for also therapeutic drugs too. So there's a vaccine or, as I said, you know, 150 uh, the vaccine candidates, some of them here is, as you can see, 123 are them uh, in preclinical studies. And there are 23 phase one, 17 in phase two, four in phase three, and two in phase four. Phase four is actually already approved uh, drugs that uh, I will talk to you a little bit about, you know, the phases, uh, but this is already completed, meaning that repurposing purposes, I mean that if there is a polio vaccine can be used to uh, or, or are tested to use as a vaccine to uh, prevent the COVID-19 disease. And also uh, uh, there are other the vaccine candidates that already being used for some other diseases are tested to, to stop the uh, COVID-19 disease and as a vaccine candidate. So all these vaccine candidates, you can, when you look at the details in the, in the that web page, uh, it shows the, uh, the, the, the phases and then see these are repurposed meaning that already used for some other disease, but can be tested for COVID-19 also. Whether if it's a DNA vaccine or inactivated virus or and the stages of the, uh, the clinical trials has been reported. And drug candidates, development of the drug candidates 
are over 284 of them, some of them already in phase three, and, and it's, it, for those are the, the later in the stages are again repurposed ones. So it's already used for malaria, for example, and it's tested for COVID-19 disease also. So all these, uh, today I'm going to, I'm not going to talk to you about the drug as a therapeutic agent. So just to, just so you know, uh, the vaccines are to prevent the uh, disease before people becoming ill. But the drugs, if the people already ill, is to treat the disease. So we are at the IBG developing both strategy, vaccine and uh, therapeutic agent, but today I'm going to talk to you about only the vaccine studies that we are doing. So the goal of the vaccine studies, ours and all of the world, is to create an immune response. These are me meaning neutralizing antibody against the SARS-CoV-2 virus and also create the memory cells so that later in our life that if we encounter this virus and we will be protected again by memory cells. So the, as a, to, to, to create a vaccine, and as an antigen, a whole or a part of SARS-CoV-19 spike protein is being used as an antigen, as I just described a couple of slides ago. So how do we develop the, uh, how do we develop the, the, uh, the vaccine in our body? Or actually, we may get naturally vaccinated if we get disease and then recover, okay? So we are trying to resemble this one be, uh, without uh, the virus making people ill. So the, once the, the coronavirus enters the human body and is accepted by or, or, or, or taken into the uh, cells that overexpresses the ACE2 uh, receptor protein, it enters it and it, it, and it releases the messenger RNA and it assembles the, uh, the virus particle again and releases. But at the same time, at this stage, the virus can be uh, ingested by antigen presenting cells to show the T helper cells. And these T helper cells uh, present the, these, the virus fragments to B cells so that B cells can make antibody against this virus. And sim same time, the viral, pep uh, the, the viral peptides also cytotoxic T cells destroys the infected human cells. So we, uh, uh, there are two ways of uh, uh, getting uh, adaptive, uh, the vaccine, uh, adaptive immune response by B cell or Th1, uh, sorry, Th2 or Th1 by cytotoxic T cells. So once we, end, uh, if we recover from this disease, our long-lived memory cells, B and T cells, protects us from this virus in a year or two years, hopefully 10 years later in our lifetime. So that, this is the purpose of the vaccine. So how many types of vaccine are there? There are actually basic four types of vaccines generated in the, in, at this time. One is the inactivated virus. One is the virus-based, vector-based, nucleic acid-based, or protein-based. Virus-based are also two uh, different ways. One is the inactivated or attenuated. Inactivation is just killing the cells by heat or chemicals so that the virus cannot infect the human anymore, but is given into the human body so that it recognizes the, those uh, uh, the virus particles by our body so that it develops the immune response to it. Similarly, the, by passaging viruses, we hope that it will uh, have the mutations and we do 
hundreds of passages, passages, and then virus get infected. We make sure that it doesn't make people sick anymore. Then we give these live or attenuated cells, uh, the viruses to human body so that it develops the immune response again. Or depending on the, the which part of the virus uh, we use, it, it can be used in the vector based, whether this vector based replicating or re replicating uh, DNA vectors, or just basically uh, injecting nucleic acids in, uh, into human body by you know, like RNA or DNA. This is the, uh, uh, the for example, uh, if we show here that this is the from uh, adenovirus uh, replicating or, or, or <coughs> replicating uh, uh, the Ox University of Ex Oxford strategy used to make the S protein, spike protein, in human body after infecting with this uh, the, the adenovirus. And our, the other method is, is the protein based. Our strategy falls in this group also. We are making protein or protein fragments to uh, in, in, uh, in another organism, purifying and giving that one to make uh, uh, use as a vaccine. And sometimes these protein based can be virus like particles, more than one protein of the virus can be expressed or a part of the protein, peptide, five, seven amino acids can be used uh, as a vaccine candidate. So, <clears throat> we just, I just described this one. Like, the, the, you, you may have heard on, on news that Moderna, a United States company uh, that using RNA virus is a nucleic acid virus here, uh, is a nucleic acid, uh, the vaccine, is making S protein as is given in the human body, that in human body, that messenger RNA is uh, used as a template to make the, uh, the protein synthesis to make the S protein. So that S protein is presented in human body by antigen presenting cells to use as a vaccine. Of course, the RNA is not very stable molecule, it's covered by lipid nanoparticles. That's how it's given in the human, uh, the muscle actually, it's injected in the human muscle. So in vivo, and another, uh, another uh, vector type is the plasmic DNA, is, this is actually electroporated system. So it's infected in muscle cells by electroporation. So those are the strategies. Ours is based on the protein, uh, uh, protein uh, va uh, vaccine. So just to, to sh tell you the, the vaccine development steps, it's a long step actually. There are many steps that involved. But since SARS and COVID, uh, SARS and MERS are already uh, uh, occurred in the past 10, 20 years, and we learn a lot from those, and we use those information to develop SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. So first is the discovery steps. So which protein is used as a vaccine? This actually comes from the earlier studies, 10 years ago with the SARS-CoV. As spike protein is being utilized to make the, SARS uh, the original SARS vaccine. And this time people, right away started with using that information, and we did also. And once we know that one, we have to make that protein or nucleic acids and do the clinical studies, preclinical studies actually. These preclinical studies and the lab scale that uh, we test the efficacy, we test the purity, we test the function, if there is a you know test that we can do. So, the, and then once we, the determine preclinical studies, those actually include also animal studies also. And, and when we go to the uh, clinical studies, clinical studies are testing in humans. I will talk about the phases that you know, we use this. And also if, if passes all the studies, then it gets approved and production and quality control and then is commercialized. This takes for 
average five years for each vaccine. So fast, fastest recorded is four years for attenuated mumps vaccines. So this has been the, the fastest vaccine developed so far is four years. So, but as you may have already heard, heard from, the, uh, uh, from the news that uh, the, we will be, or not we as an IBG, but the, the, in the world, we are expecting the, the, the SARS-CoV vaccine in a year, hopefully, but it may not be the, the case. So it depends on the results. So we, I will talk about that. There are already phase one, two, three molecules that is being tested whether it, if it will clear safety and efficacy, and then it can be used as a vaccine candidate. So the average is five years, but we will try to beat this one. So when we do the preclinical studies, first we have to test the efficacy, whether it will protect the animal being sick or getting being sick. So that means that first we have to give this vaccine to the the mice or any the model on animals, and then we will challenge, meaning that we will give the the dose of the virus that will make that animal sick. If it protects the uh, animal for from getting sick, then that means it's a good candidate. We will go to phase studies. Phase studies are first phase one is about 20 to 80 people tested to find the best dose with the fewer side effects. These are volunteer people that not sick and no disease uh, at all, and people that didn't have the COVID-19 disease earlier. So the, for vaccine studies, people shouldn't have disease uh, already recovered from disease. This cannot be used. Uh, so first 20 to 80 people will be tested. And then second, uh, the phase two is further assess the safety of, the, as well as the drug, if the, the drug works. This takes at least three to four years, actually, these two, two steps in general, in normal cases. But pandemic cases, it could be very fast. We already know that so many drugs already in the phase three could have been taken four years already. So the phase three is the, efficacy, safety, and new dose, testing the new dose and new indications, and then it will take, you know, minimum regularly two years. And of course, once this passes the phase three, it's approved and given to people. And during that, uh, uh, when phase four starts after commercialization, actually, people are already using this one and to see the post-marketing server links. Uh, data that is collected. So, as you can see, the, the vaccine uh, studies takes long time. What are we doing at the IBG? As I said earlier, we are doing the vaccine against SARS-CoV-2 and also drug or therapeutic agent we are developing. So I'm not going to talk about the, the second one. I'm going to talk to you about this on the vaccine studies. Uh, the, but one thing that, you know, the, the, this is therapeutic, as a therapeutic agent, uh, one SARS-CoV, when it's entering the human, human body, it uses the ACE2 receptor. So it's called receptor binding domain. And there is a region on the S protein that is receptor binding domain. So we are trying to uh, the block interaction between virus and ACE2 we develop the RBD, you know, we are, if we make this RBD in, you know, uh, in another organism purify and that protein we give to the human, it will compete with the virus. It will compete with the virus, then hopefully the more uh, soluble uh, receptor binding domain will bind onto ACE2 so that ACE uh, virus cannot attach. Or another strategy is the ACE2, if we, if we fuse ACE2 to the FC protein, FC is a uh, the, a constant region of the immunoglobulins, and then in, in human body, it will attach to the virus 
and then it will block the the virus and and virus spike protein and ACE2. So that blocking this one will uh, people protect people getting sick. So the spike variants for vaccine development, as you can see, this is uh, 1,273 amino acids. It consists of uh, over 1,200 amino acids. So we can use a part or whole spike protein as a vaccine candy. In, for expression in yeast, we use different versions of it. Okay, so the, for this purpose, we use uh, Picia pasteuris is known as now Comacatella papai and is very similar to Saccharomyces cerevisiae and it's a metallotrophic yeast and grows to very broad range from pH 3 to 7, very high cell densities in the fermenter, over uh, 130 gram per liter of dry cell weight or 500 gram of wet cell weight it can reach to. Uh, the very strong inducible alcohol oxidase promoter, it has a 2A alcohol oxidase promoter that we can use as a, as a uh, gene expression. So in, when, we produce, when we use the picky pastoris in shake flask, is very, you know, 10 OD, very uh, small amount of cell produced. But when we go to the fermenter scale or bioreactor, and it goes to uh, over 100, uh, 500 gram per liter of wet cell weight. So as you can see, half of the, the, uh, the tank is actually the yeast wet cell weight. Okay. So very, uh, can grow very high cell densities. So this yeast is uh, isolated 1969. So over 50 years, uh, just actually known to humans. And it is used to single cell protein production during 70s, 80s. And then expression system developed during 90s. And 93 is in commercialized patents. Most of the patents are already expired because it's over 20 years ago developed. And, and, and it's also recently shown that it has a probiotic properties of you know, this yeast. And genome sequence has been, has been sequenced and is available on public databases. So this cell has a very advantages, cloning techniques, very similar to Picia saccharomyces, cost effective, grows in very cheap carbon sources, productivity is uh, you know, very high, or of course this depends on the proteins, but it's suitable for industrial scales. This is very important, up to 100,000 liters uh, can grow in the, in the fermenters. Uh, in Cho, for example, Chinese hamster, you can, the most you can go is up to 10,000 or 20,000 is actually at the industrial scale. It can do post-translational modifications, you know, uh, because it's eukaryotic, it's human, you know, trans, uh, post-translational modifications, disulfide bound fermentation, glycosylation, it, this can happen in, in yeast also. And it also can excrete full-length antibodies. So, but of course, every system has advantages and also disadvantages. It's very high cell densities, proteolysis, protease degradation, or non-native glycosylation may occur. Because it's used as a met methanol, as an uh, inducer, this requires explosion-proof facilities. And those are also, of course, is expensive. So if you're making a lot of protein in yeast, Sometimes it's bottleneck for extracellular production. So it doesn't split much, it's accumulated inside the cell. So the commercially is actually a good thing about this yeast. For example, hepatitis B vaccine is produced and is being already used in, in human. So our COVID-19 strategy is very similar to hepatitis B uh, uh, vaccine. So I will explain a little bit later uh, that how we use that system, okay? And of course, uh, the insulin is produced in this yeast. And also there is a, uh, other some uh, FDA approved drugs already in the market. 
So just an overview of steps to make the vaccine. Very briefly, I will describe it here. So the, the spike protein or a part of spike protein coding DNA is we order from the companies and put in the plasmids that used to ex uh, express the recombinant proteins in this yeast, Fikia pastoris. We transform by electroporation and we add antibiotic, zeosin antibiotic. If this plasmid enters the yeast, it can grow on this, uh, the media that contain antibiotic uh, because this plasmid contains antibiotic resistant genes, meaning there is an enzyme there that degrades the zeosin so that a yeast can grow on this media. So once we determine those yeast, we grow them in the test tube and then put in shaker and then induce with the methanol. And, then we'll, and we test here at shake, Shaker Incubator. We test up to 50 clones and determine whether it's making the protein of interest. Here is the spike protein. If we have the antibody against the spike protein, we use Western to detect the, that protein is, if, it is a, uh, if it is produced. Once we determine the clone, out of you know one clone out of 50 clones or best producing, we test at the, you know pH, temperature, or methanol concentrations that best production condition. We optimize fermentation condition at shaker incubator. Then once we determine those and we go to the bioreactor scale. This is five liter scale in our lab right now. We use this and we start with two liter and then we feed fat batch fermentation, we feed methanol during the 90 hour of induction and to see whether the protein is produced or not. Once that's been done, we centrifuge, we clarify the supernatant, so cells are separated through the filter and then we purify supernatant, we purify the spike protein out of supernatant. Once we get that one, we formulate and we give into the, the, uh, the mice that if that protein of interest is immunogenic, we, we get the, uh, the blood of that mice to see whether it is binding onto the virus itself, okay, or antigen. So just to tell you that we are at this stage, we injected into mouse, we have not got the results of the, you know, the mice studies yet. So it's, it's about, uh, in, in more than a month, we should know whether our candidates has immunogenic properties or not. So we will know this in, in, in six weeks or so. So the promoters, of course, you know, we use the uh, Pikia pastoris. We used in this case methanol induction, but it can be constantly methanol induced or ethanol induced promoters can be utilized. Just to give you the, here is the AOX1 promoter. Underneath, there is a you know, gene of spike protein uh, is uh, cloned in uh, right after the AOX1 promoter. And then that's what in, in, in transform in the yeast, grow them in the Petri dishes and test tube. In, in, in first, we grow in glycerol and we add methanol to induce the protein production up to uh, 67, uh, I mean, four to five days sometimes. And then, and then we test on the SDS page. As you can see here, here is the, our host control protein, controlled strain actually, no, or, uh, uh, no transformation. The, and there are two clones that here, as you can see, with the transform, there is a one band about 25 kDA is showing up here. Of course, we don't know whether these proteins are our interest. And we know that spike protein has a glycosylation. If the glycosylation is <clears throat> removed by endo-H enzyme, that size changes. 
as you can see, our clone supernatant, there is a band here, and once we treat with the uh, uh, endoH, it drops to here, and, and there is a possibility of having this protein is our uh, spike protein. And actually, we did the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the peptide mapping, and this confirms that this is the protein of interest, and this is the antigen that we are trying to make. So once uh, in the shake plus we determined that one, we put in the fermenter, uh, we make the master cell bank or working cell bank and put in the first we grow in this uh, 24 hour in shake plus and, uh, and <clears throat> inoculate in the fermenter. And this is two liters starting and then final uh, volume becomes four liter after 90, or 90 hour of 96 hour of induction. We do 28 degrees pH, depending on the three to seven, we test and determine the best conditions. So here is the, our five liter scale production. And as you can see, this band increases by time. And this is our standard from shake flask that shows up here. And in the five liter, of course, these proteins are PICIA extracellular proteins. This is our interest of uh, protein of interest. As you can see, it's a little bit broad uh, the band because of the end glycosylation uh, of the spike protein. So after that, we clarify the supernatant, we purify with the uh, uh, chromatography uh, the machines, and we use three step chromatography here uh, hydrophobic interactions. An anion exchange chromatography, size exclusion chromatography, and then here are the, the examples of these supernatants. And after each step, some of them is actually to capture the protein of interest, some of them negative purification, meaning flow through. So we collect our protein at the flow through. For example, here is anion exchange. So anion exchange chromatography captures the PICIA proteins so that it's separate from our protein of interest. And the final step is the size exclusion. And as you can see, our fractions are, are almost over 90%, 99% pure protein of interest we got it from the uh, uh, purification steps. So we, are, we, we were able to purify uh, the molecules and they currently we are uh, uh, we produced and purified at lab scale. My star mice studies are started to test if the molecules are immunogenic. Once we hear from this one, if the, the, we get the positive results, we will go to next step, larger uh, scale, up to thousand liters fermentation, and of course this has to be CGMP production, meaning that current good manufacturing practices. In order to go FDA or FDA in the United States, EMA at the uh, European Union, or TITCHEKA in, in, in Turkey, in order to get approval to use in humans, you have to produce at the current manufacturing practices. So once we deter, uh, and then purify, of course, this time with the larger columns, you know, bigger columns, and then we formulate and we give, of course, we test again in the, in the animals and, and then design the, the human clinical studies as the next step. So uh, we are here uh, and being, these molecules are being tested at the uh, animals. And I would like to thank the people who already contributed at IBG or Dokuzeli University uh, and all the people around about 20, more than 20 people. And also pharma uh, people that working in, uh, under my uh, supervision and also from different lab that helped uh, uh, expressing this protein and purifying it. And again, uh, and I, uh, Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, 
Thank you, Dr. Mehmet Inna. Uh, if you have any question, uh, you can ask. Also, if you like uh, ask, ask a question in Turkish, you can ask. Eğer isterseniz Türkçe Türkçe olarak da sorunuzu sorabilirsiniz arkadaşlar. Hocam merhaba. Merhaba. Ben Erşegül. Teşekkür ederim öncelikle sunumunuz için. Benim küçük bir sorum vardı. Bu tesisleri için e, orada bir modifikasyon yapabiliyor musunuz? Yani orada tutunmayı engelleyebilen başka bir yöntem deneyebiliyor musunuz? Tesislerini e, aktive etmek için aslında acuvantlarla e, şey yapıyor. Kendi molekülden öte farklı acuvantlar kullanarak işte tesislerinde TH1 ya da TH2 responsını yapmak için yani tesislerine veya B sellerine gitmeleri için farklı acuvanlar kullanıyoruz. Şu anda biz onları da test ediyoruz yani aslında. Teşekkür ederim hocam. Sizlere ne yaz question? Başka soru var mıydı? Ben Size. küçük bir soru daha sorabilir miyim hocam eğer uygunsa? Buyurun. Ee, şu anki yapılan yöntemleri, yapılan çalışmaları nasıl buluyorsunuz? Yani e, Ercüment Hoca'nın da var mesela bununla, buna yönelik bir çalışması. Ve bayağı evet. da ilerlediğini görüyorum sosyal medyadan özellikle. Siz bu konu hakkında ne düşünüyorsunuz? Sizin e, ilerleme seviyeniz nasıl? Türkiye'nin bu COVID seviyesindeki durumu nasıl? Yani tedavi süreci e, diğer ülkelerle kıyaslandığında nasıl buluyorsunuz? Şimdi e, şöyle, e, Türkiye'de de ben ondan bahsetmedim. Şimdi bizim e, proje e, yani TÜBİDAK tarafından desteklenen bir projeyle yapıyoruz bunu. E, bizim Türkiye'de yaklaşık 17-18 tane grup var. 8 tane aşı var. Yani 18 tane e, proje var. Bunların 8 tanesi aşı. Ve bu aşılar biraz önce bahsettiğim 8 tane farklı metodu kullanıyor. Ercüment Hoca'nın da kullandığı ve Selçuk Üniversitesi'nin de kullandığı e, e, inactivated yani e, e, virüsün öldürülmüş virüs kullanılarak e, yapılan aşı çalışması. Şimdi TÜBİTAK bunları öyle bir dağıttı ki herkes yani birbirini replike etmeden her biri farklı teknolojiyle kullanılan. Bizim projemiz rekombinant protein bazlıydı ve dünyada da biraz önce gösterdim eğer o biorender e, sayfasına da giderek her birinin hangi teknoloji kullandığını orada bahsediyor. Bizim 8 tane dünyada yapılan bütün aşıların hepsini kullanıyoruz. Yani şu andaki Türkiye'deki teknolojiler de öyle. Ama e, tabii ki e, bu teknolojileri özellikle DNA, RNA aşıları henüz Türkiye'de dünya, e, Türkiye'yi bırakalım dünyada onaylanmış hiçbir tane molekül yok. Bizim yani e, Ercüment Hoca'nın kullandığı, evet o e, şekilde kullanılan e, aşılar var ve en hızlı ilerleyebilecek bilinen bir aşı türü. İnşallah e, başarılı olur. Dünyada da bununla ilgili özellikle Çin'le e, faz 3'e geldik diyorlar o konularda. Biz Türkiye olarak, rekombinant olarak e, faz 2 geçen henüz yok tahminim bizim teknolojiyi kullanarak. Maalesef biz daha... E, fare denemelerindeyiz. Biraz geriden gidiyoruz ama aynı teknoloji. Şimdi onlardan diyelim ki dünyada bu işi yapan farklı ülkelerde onay alsa dahi yeterince olacak mı? Yani bizim kendi aşımızı dünyaya bakmadan tabii ki ilerlerde onlar geliştirirse alıp biz de kullanılabiliriz. Ama bizim de onlardan hiç gelmeyecekmiş gibi kendi aşımızı geliştirmemiz gerekiyor. Bu 8 tane farklı metotten en, i̇nşallah en az birisi çalışır diye ümit ediyoruz. Tekrar teşekkür ederim hocam. Also I have a question uh, dear Professor Dr. Mehmet. Uh, you uh, suggested that uh, or you classified the possible uh, solution as a four or five base based on the uh, nucleic acids or proteins and so on. Uh, could we compare them according to their immunogenity uh, as an advantage or disadvantage? Uh, the, well, it's very tough because we have to we have to test everything side by side in you know in same studies. It's very hard to 
compare one study to, from China using inactivated virus versus RNA vaccine from United States. So is because those, you know, some of them has not even reported final, you know, data are not reported. They are just like news. There is no scientific data. They don't show the, any scientific data. So it's very tough. As an immunogenicity, everything comes down to protein. Okay. So the, whatever the, whether you give the RNA, you give DNA, everything is the protein. So the, at the end, they are all supposed to give similar immunogenicity if, if it contains the same uh, protein, uh, same protein, it's if it's coding the same uh, protein fragment, I should say. But how it is, you know, given to people, how it's made, what part of the, the protein is being used, it all depends. It will affect, of course, the immunogenicity. Uh, the easiest way is RNA, RNA, uh, the vaccines, because you just make the RNA, give it to the human, and then let the human body express protein and then present in the antigen presenting cells to develop immune response. But or we are making protein in yeast, purifying and giving the protein itself. So they're, they're supposed to be, if you're, if you're using the same protein, they're supposed to be all immunogenic. Thank you very much, uh, again. Uh, is there any question else? Yes. Uh, hello, P Prof. Rina. Uh, my name is Akan. And uh, first of all, I would like to thanks for your innovative project studies and your talks also. Uh, I have a question. Uh, as you know, uh, everybody is waiting for mutation of the COVID-19. If it will happen, what will happen to uh, current vaccine pro uh, projects and studies? So, yeah. So that's a very good question, actually. So, uh, especially uh, in the vaccine development with the recombinant proteins, if the the the mutation occurs in, for example, in uh, spike protein. If it is affecting, if it is affecting the uh, interaction between uh, uh, ACE2 and spike protein, it may or may not affect the, the uh, efficacy of the vaccine because we don't know, you know, the, the, the mutations are random. So if we know where it's going to the mutation occur, we will design based on that one. But the, the recombinant protein vaccines are taking so long that going back and, you know, it will take another year to, to, to develop a, a new one. But in, in that case, nucleic acids, you know, RNA, vi, RNA vaccines are very uh, positive or, or, or advantages on this one because when a mutation occurs you can design new rna molecule in in one week actually you can produce another one in, in, in the mutation you can but unfortunately uh, the nucleic acid vaccines there are there are no vaccine nucleic acid vaccine in the market or approved vaccine yet so there, that's the another disadvantage. Uh, we are hoping the okay, when it, from Turkey, there are 60 isolates that genome has been sequenced. When we looked at them, the, our designs based on the uh, Wuhan, Wuhan, uh, Wuhan uh, strain, and it didn't affect at all in our design. So in four months, and all these different mutations did not affect with our recombinant protein vaccine at this stage. But it doesn't mean that it won't. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so as I understand, uh, RNA vaccine, if mutation happens, so it's, it will be easy to change also vaccine yes. inside. 
uh, but uh, then the procedure uh, you explain, you know, phase one, two, three, and the other uh, commonalized situations. This phase also uh, is going to start at the beginning or? No, no, that no. report okay. actually it's because very similar, depending on the, you know, if it is a pandemic, it will be probably will start from phase three right away. Because okay. it's, yeah, it won't start from scratch, actually. it won't go back to zero. So there will be small revision. Yes. That's all. Small okay. Yes, okay, good. thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any last question? No, I think. Uh, thank you very much again, uh, dear Professor Dr. Mehmet Inan, for uh, this update and uh, fruitful presentation. Uh, hopefully, after the pandemic, also we give, have a change to meet with you with a seminar in the future. Uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to give a presentation and hopefully, yeah, as you wish, you know. Um, Barış Hocam, or maybe we will uh, visit uh, Professor. Yes. Yeah. In Izmir, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with our students. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome to visit. Evet. Uh, Katılımcılara da çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Ee, tahmin ediyorum herhalde bir 15-20 gün içerisinde yeni bir seminerle e, yine güncel bir konuyla e, bir seminer, e, webinar daha doğrusu bir webinar organizasyonu da yapmaya çalışacağız bir 15-20 gün sonrası için tekrardan. Katılımlarınız için çok teşekkür ediyorum. E, herkese iyi günler ve sağlıklı günler diliyorum. E, Mehmet Hocam size de tekrardan teşekkür ediyorum. Sağlıklı günler diliyorum. Teşekkür ederim Mehmet Hocam.